and that you all know uh, lack of uh, infrastructure there are many restrictions many problems but uh, you know instead of covering all the problems okay uh, i have just figured out few problems okay like uh, as i said uh, regulatory hurdles uh, you know pharmaceutical uh, industry is very heavily regulated and uh, you know getting a new drug approval you know it's it's a lengthy process and it's a costly process okay at the same time intellectual property disputes okay, patents are critical component you know and uh, definitely there will be disputes arising safety concerns okay paramount importance to safety concern is given okay and many of the drugs have been pulled away from the market okay. even flow of indian drugs have been pulled away from the market okay and uh, the other thing is for the developing nations there is a huge start you know shortage of critical medication okay so these are few problems okay lack of innovation okay. you know the pharmaceutical industry is often criticized for lack of innovation okay so access to medicine as i said developing nations or uh, their access to uh, you know medicines is very restricted so uh these are few of the problems now once again stop sharing and that's the same question are there any other problems than what you know i have raised means if one or two problem statements from students you know comes in as input So then uh, it would be like two way communication so people can put something or uh, raise your hand then you know two discussions can happen and then we can move ahead yeah so one second let me figure out who i can ask some for some inputs it's not like a questioning but uh, it's like a So I think uh, I can interact with uh, Ravin sir. Ravin sir, if you are online. Hello sir. Yeah. Good morning. Morning, morning sir. Oh. Yeah. I was uh, waiting, waiting for some of question from students. Uh, so yeah, I got one question. Uh, so the problem, as you mentioned, what um, problem? pharmacy pharma sector is facing so one of the problem i yeah. well, sir i lost your voice in between can you hear me sir yeah now now i can yeah so the problem what i think uh, pharma sector is uh, facing is uh, regarding new apis there is no uh, new development coming uh, in new apis in india okay okay yeah uh, thank you thank you for that input sir yeah obviously uh, there are major problems and issues uh, in pharma industry and uh, as you said uh, you know something new needs to be coming in and well as there should be reforms made uh, in the regulatory authority okay of course you know that we can't uh, it, it's not in our hand but what uh, we can do is uh, how we can motivate the students 
to figure out the problems and you know to build solutions for that so my you know the other half of the session is going to be on that how to you know how to create uh, a worthy solution and how to test it and you know that is more towards uh, technical products and uh, uh, it's more towards service oriented uh, way but uh, definitely i will connect it to the pharma side and uh, we are going to move ahead and uh, okay so let's let's uh, continue share Okay, so uh, this is where we are struck with. So, what I felt was, so this is what we our session is for okay. problem solution. Okay. So, design your products in the way that customers will be paying for it. So, I will come back to this slide. Uh, so uh, this is one area which uh, I would like to discuss so that I get connected with the use people. Okay. So target drug delivery, drug logistic, uh, your drug carrier is, you know, more uh, robustly developing and a uh, lot of uh, innovations are coming in. Uh, particularly usage of nanotechnology. So targeted drug delivery as you know when a drug is being developed okay, it is intended to a particular cell okay, and uh, basically when drug in the process of drug development uh, you know uh, every one would look that it is going to uh, you know uh, affect the targeted cell. Okay, means it is going to do, you know, uh, theoretic, uh, you know, effect, and uh, the other cells remains, uh, you know, unaffected. So for that, particularly nanotechnology is, you know, being into the use. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is something, uh, of course, uh, which uh, I have taken from one of the research paper. Okay. So uh, basically, these are, you know, uh, things which uh, are being particularly used widely in delivering the drugs. Okay. And uh, majority of uh, nano the research says that you know nanotechnology is going to be very effective in uh, you know delivering the drug to the target okay, to the target cell. Okay. So uh, I think your professors, you know, they are very uh, rich in this area. So uh, students, uh, you can connect to your uh, faculty regarding uh, these areas. Let me go to the next one. So let 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 me give you an example. You know. So when people come, our pharma students come and ask, uh, they come and they say that uh, we want to develop, uh, you know, we want to be in a system of developing personalized medicine. This is uh, a, one example. This is one example where uh, one of the student team came us. <coughs> of course, they are working in this mess. So not on a you know, practical basis, but on the you know, uh, on uh, paper as a storyboard, they are uh, designing their uh, prototype. Okay, so how it is going to work? We are also eagerly waiting for the results. Okay, how they are going to build the solution? We are eagerly waiting for it. So basically, when they came with this, they said that for, you know we want to do tailoring treatment to which design tailoring treatment uh, drug to the individuals by connecting to the doctor. Okay. And uh, by using uh, personalized uh, medicine approaches, you know, uh, doctors can identify the treatments that are, uh, you know, more likely uh, to affect uh, each patient and uh, reducing side effects and improving outcomes. Okay. So uh, 
this is one of the example and there is one more example and uh, this is another problem statement which our students came with you know they want to come with digital health okay and uh, digital health technologies such as uh, they want to come with wearable devices mobile health apps you know and uh, so may, many teams are coming with this many teams are coming with this and uh, as they are part of university you know pharma students in come you know in collaboration with the uh, tech students okay they are working on these products also okay they are working on uh, you know health technologies you know wearable devices and uh, many mobile uh, uh, health apps they are working on okay. so uh, these are some of the problem areas which uh, i have you know which uh, interacted with the students when they came with these uh, kind of problem statements and uh, let's come to the uh, solution development part okay so our uh, i you know other part with problem uh, solution fit or market product fit we have to follow a procedure okay. so to succeed in product development you have to change your perspective and uh, of course business model should be there but uh, our pharma you know uh, i i have not find any innovative business model coming recently to the indian market but uh, if you see okay uh, in uh, us uh, one second I would ask uh, somebody. Do you people have management subjects in your curriculum? Do you have management paper in your curriculum, which you go through? Again, I need to take help of one of your professors. Swarna, ma'am. Or I can see a couple of people names. Sweta Pawa. Vaishali Kulkarni. Sakshi Raikar. Hope you people are uh, listening. Okay. So, I would, I would show you one website. You know, because... Uh, this is one of the website uh, which really, uh, you know, uh, attracted me a lot. You know, and uh, why are you looking to this one? Means this is something which, uh, 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 which is uh, innovation into the uh, pharma sector. So if one can. If I can find one student who can interact with me, then uh, we will have a small discussion and then uh, we will move ahead. Hello? Yeah, ma'am. Yes. yes, sir. Ma'am, do you. I'm know? audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible, ma'am. Uh, in the curriculum, is there any business management paper for these students? No, 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 sir. No. No, there is no any subject regarding the business management and all. Okay, okay. Because I need to adjust my terminology so that I can connect to these people in a better way. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, ma'am. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah. So let me share you with a, with a website uh, because as I'm saying, uh, we need to identify a better business model until uh, unless you don't find a better business model, you cannot uh, you know produce a product which really fits into the market. So uh, let me share you one medicine. And uh, for that, first, let me tell you the problem. Okay, the problem is uh, diabetic patients, uh, previously they used to find it very difficult to uh, inject the insulin. The problem was previously uh, the saline bottle injection needles needs to be carried separately. Okay. And I uh, you know. Uh, to take a diabetic injection in public, it was something like, uh, you know, uh, uneasy and nobody wants to tell to others that I am a diabetic patient. Okay. So people were, uh, because of uncomfortability, because of, uh, you know, unable to use that uh, needle, syringe uh, and uh, injection method, that was very uncomfortable. At that time, one company, I think you people might have heard about uh, Nova Neurodisc. Okay. Nova Neurodisc has identified this problem and uh, immediately they started to work on it. They started to work on it and uh, they were that now the people are, you know, feeling ashamed to inject themselves in public. So what is the problem? They started to put the problem. One thing, three things they have to carry. Okay. So what they did, they designed a solution. The solution is disc pen. Okay. So they have designed an injecting pen. Okay. So which is just like a pocket pen. You can carry it in your pocket. Whenever you want, you can just take it and you can put it and you can inject whatever the dose the doctor has prescribed. Okay. So this pen was designed. Noah has designed this. And then their business did not end with that. Okay. Their business, you know, uh, then they started to develop the insulin. At that time, pure insulin was not available. Okay. There was impurity in the insulin. Okay. So they have designed, you know, uh, insulin and they also designed it in the form of cartridges. Okay. And these cartridges were inserted into the, you know, injecting pens. And, you know, the doctors were very much happy to recommend uh, Nova Disc and their insulin. So let me share their website with you. So that, uh, let's see. So, okay. so I am unable to share my presentation. I think uh, some change has been happened. So I request to provide the access so, so that I can share. Yes, sir, just a second. Yes, sir. Just
can let me you know so you so please can you check again yeah no it's still the same only meeting organizers and presenters can share Sir, now it's okay, I think. Please can you check? So, still the same thing. You can see only meeting organizers and presenters can share. Sir, I request you to wait for two minutes. There's a technical glitch. So now it's okay, I think. Now it's okay. Yeah, once again, I will show. Yeah, now it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let me show you uh, a product which I was talking about. So this is the product I was talking about. Uh, you know, at that time, this yes, insulin. Sir. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is the product I was talking about. This is one of the products which really changed the way people uh, take insulin. So it was designed, custom designed according to the customer dream need. Okay. So now. I find uh, in my campus, I find many of our professors carrying these pens and they simply inject uh, insulin and uh, you know, they move ahead. So uh, this is, a, you know, I think this would, this is one of the good example of, of what I can show you. Of course, your professors might have shown you, but uh, I thought uh, one more time I can uh, show. And uh, the other thing was uh, in the uh, so I want to play a small video. One second. Yeah, so I would I would uh, play a small video. Okay, then uh, we'll go ahead with the uh, the same thing, the same story, the same story of uh, Nova Disc. I don't know whether I can share it with voice or not, but... In 1921, Canadian scientists Frederick Banting and Charles Best discovered insulin and began using it to treat patients with diabetes. In 1922, Danish scientists August and Marie Kroll journeyed to North America where Marie, herself a diabetic, heard about the discovery in Canada. The Crows traveled to the University of Toronto and met Banting and Best. They sought and received permission to produce insulin themselves back in Denmark. By 1923, the company they founded, known today as Novo Nordisk, became the first company in Europe to produce and sell insulin as a treatment for diabetes. Today, after more than 90 years focused on diabetes care, we are thousands of employees across the world with the passion, the skill, and the commitment to continue this journey to prevent, treat, and ultimately cure diabetes. At the same time, we aspire to change possibilities in hemophilia and other serious chronic conditions where we can make a difference. At Novo Nordisk, our guiding principles, what we call the Novo Nordisk way, 
are the foundation of our business. The Novo Nordisk Way articulates our commitment to improvement, from bringing innovation to patients and stakeholders, to protecting the planet, or to providing life-changing careers for employees. We aim to make things better wherever we go, whatever we do. We are passionate about ensuring that all our actions are economically viable, socially responsible, and environmentally sound. We call this the triple bottom line. By putting patients at the center of everything we do, while being economically responsible, we guarantee long-term stability and ensure that the people who rely on us will be supported for the long run. By taking early steps towards reducing our energy footprint now, we reduce our impact on the climate and prepare ourselves for an energy-constrained future, meaning we can continue to innovate and save lives in a changing world. Finally, we have committed ourselves to increasing awareness and education on diabetes, hemophilia, and women's health. Through supporting advocacy groups, activism, and community events, we aim to empower patients and improve access to care across the globe. At Noble Nordisk, we know that further research and innovation is the key to continuing to improve the lives of patients. In 2013, Novo Nordisk invested 14% of every dollar earned back into research and development. While more than 23,000 people took part in Novo Nordisk-sponsored clinical trials underway around the world. We know the future will hold more advancement, and we are committed to being at the forefront of that research. We work with researchers all over the world to discover innovative therapies that have the potential to improve the lives of patients. Today, 382 million people have diabetes. That's one in 12 adults. Only half the people with diabetes know they have it, putting them at risk of irreversible damage to their nerves, kidneys, eyes, and heart. As the world's leading healthcare company specializing in diabetes, Novo Nordisk has a responsibility to fight the diabetes pandemic. With a broad portfolio of treatments, a strong pipeline, and a determination to go beyond medicine and advocate for better diabetes prevention and care, we and our partners from patient organizations to policymakers strive to improve the lives of people affected by diabetes all over the world. Did uh, only video has been played or uh, video along with voice has been played? No, sir. Both was uh, like it was visible as well as audible. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, let's move on this presentation. So that was one of the classical uh, example. Uh, you know, there is a problem and they have designed a solution and also they have made the solution into a product which fits into the market, uh, which we have seen just now. So that is one of our inspiring company. So let's jump. Very quickly, yeah. So, when you are looking with a uh, problem solution fit or market product fit, you are supposed to uh, follow this cycle, BML cycle. We call it as build, measure, learn. So, many times there is a misperception that we don't have laboratories or uh, uh, we don't have enough uh, uh, rapid prototyping labs to you know, prototype and uh, uh, you know, uh, test it in the market and get the feedback and uh, you know, iterate it. But actually, prototyping doesn't mean that it should be in the physical mode itself. You can make it as a uh, video or you can make it as a uh, you know, playbook, okay? Or you can put it as a storyboard. Okay? And you can tell what happens, what happens first, then what happens, then second, what happens what happens on each page you can put and you can tell so this is what the process is going to be of my product that my service and you are going to build the solution and you know you are, you are supposed to show it to the user okay. so for that you are supposed to build then you are supposed to interact with your customer okay 
and measure how your customer is looking at it okay so very simple here when a customer it's not always uh, uh, customer means it's, he may not be the end user okay like sterile app okay uh, parents purchase sterile app but uh, the kids are the end user the children are the end user okay. so uh, you need to find the end user and you need to talk to them you need to tell them that this is what the solution i am offering this is the problem and this is the solution i am offering so how would you you know how would you you know uh, rate my solution or what is your uh, recommendations of uh, my solution okay so this is what one said okay so and then learn learn from it you are supposed to build you are supposed to measure and you are supposed to learn okay and uh, is there any procedure for that yes problem solution field at this stage we need answers and we need answers for is this the problem worth solving first thing what we are supposed to ask ourselves is we need to check whether the problem which we are selecting is it worth it to solve okay then do we have a solution to the problem if these two questions are there then build measure learn find way to your customers are and interact with them to build measure perform primarily qualitative assessment at this stage okay by putting customer that this is what my product is going to be okay and then learn with every iteration go take the feedback okay ask them take uh, input again try to build it and then again try to move ahead in product marketing this is another important thing product market fit it means bringing the right product to the right market at this stage you are supposed to tell that this is the product which i am going to design and this is this is the product which i have i have been designed and this is how we are going to uh, serve you okay and uh, uh, when at this stage there are few questions you need to ask is this product viable profitable is this product feasible can it be built can we scale it so is this product viable profitable but is this really uh, this is the product what customers are looking for there will be hundreds of apps launched into the market every day and uh, we don't even get notice of that why because they are not viable they have built the product which nobody want that that is the biggest mistake young innovators come in or young entrepreneurs come in while designing or while dreaming about a product you need to ask the question is this product viable is this product profitable will people pay for it then is this product feasible can i really mail it can the manufacturing happen over here can i you know track it and measure it in the premises where i am staying or after either can you build or can you say if it is not going to happen what you are going to do now you had an idea you have created a solution but there is no infrastructure for you people to build that product then what we are going to do i just have to put a pause to the sharing come back you know and uh, this is a uh, a very important question because my students end up here my students always come and say so when i try to you know uh manufacture this product i contacted china manufacturers i contacted korea manufacturer 
they are saying they are going to you know break if it is in 1000 units or 10000 units but now i am unsure whether uh, this product is uh, going to be successful or not what to do these are the regular questions i get so what actually you people do when you feel that manufacturing is not feasible in india what you are going to do i think you are getting me you know you have identified a problem now you have crafted a solution for that okay the problem has been identified and you have designed it and you have crafted a solution okay now after crafting the solution now you are feeling that the manufacturing is one of the issues you cannot manufacture it here so at this stage what you will do what do you what do you people will do okay so let me tell you what i would suggest to my students i would say don't uh, stop at that don't stop at that point if you are unable to design or build a product and if you are sure that that is a unique product and uh, definitely it is going to make some changes definitely it is going to attract customers then go for patent take a patent of it and put it for put it in front of industry so this is the product can you help me in building it or did you help me in getting them from the manufacturers who are outside in india and that is how industry you know institute collaboration can work more in you know, a better way in a stronger way so at this point i would say you are unable to design our manufacture the product go for the patent okay and approach this and take a hit. don't you know don't leave your uh, uh, product and of course when you have put a lot of effort the other thing what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to scale it up okay. you are supposed to scale your product you must be able to you know demonstrate the product bring the product and uh, uh increase the customer expectation okay and uh, try to make uh, more kind of uh, add on features okay. don't build the entire product at a time build what is important to users then show it to the users and then ask the users how you are feeling it and once you did that okay once you do that then you can uh, uh, understand then you can no what else the customers are expecting then keep on adding uh, this is for incremental innovation and uh, you know continuously scan the market trends and see what is happening in the market they were uh, you know uh, agile uh, kind of production comes in so build the product which really suits the market and believe it market will change continuously market is going to change every day market is going to change every week okay. so you need to keep an eye on the market and see that the product will also get incremental add ons okay you should have your plan b with you and keep your product moving keep your product scaling in the market you know either it might be an uh, apple or it might be samsung okay they keep on scaling their products by adding incremental innovations to the existing products okay. then so i hope you people have a great idea for a product something that's all to capture the hearts and minds of uh, consumers everywhere or perhaps stumbled on a service that is not being offered by anyone else one that is desperately needed this is your opportunity don't hesitate don't look back you know jump right into it but you know before jumping you need to see you know don't go in the high gate 
they must determine there is there is really a market for your product or service not only that you need to ascertain what if any fine tuning is needed as i said market is dynamic it's ever changing you are supposed to continue your market research continue to interact with your customer continue to interact with user then only you can design a product which fits into the market so with this i come to an end so any questions thank you sir i can you know i can Yes, sir. I think I'm audible, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. First of all, uh, that was indeed motivating, and it was extremely informative. We shall now like move to question answer session. I request the participants to please uh, unmute themselves if they have any questions. Good morning, sir. I got yeah, one question. Morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you you mentioned about the um, target based uh, delivery system. Yeah. yeah. One of the example. Yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, in the problem you mentioned about the cost. So when we are talking about target based uh, drug delivery, or if you are talking about personalized medicine. uh the cost wise it is a is it viable product for developing countries to have target based drug delivery or personalized medicine do you think yeah. it will be a fit for a market yeah so basically we we need to segment the market we to segment the market and uh, we need to identify the niche customers which customers which who are your customers who are your target customers and for that particular target you know it can be delivered so why i say this means if uh, you see you you take any medicine okay different uh, manufacturers price them differently for example uh, uh, one of our student came with uh, you know making a difference of uh, one of the uh, medicine uh, it's for uh, something <coughs> it's uh, like a cardiac treatment and one of the manufacturer I don't want to name it they are charging it uh, 3500 where in the generic uh, stores uh, you are getting it at uh, you know less than 100 rupees so the same combination the same you know uh, uh, what we say uh, formula or formation but manufacturers based upon their uh, uh, branding they are selling it at a different prices so when it comes to developing countries and personalized medicine of course uh, you know uh, the bottom of pyramid is very tough to reach okay. but initially we can introduce it to the top of the pyramid so people with you know good income levels if we can start with them you know slowly we can uh, spread it to the bottom also which it's it's from my point of view everybody has their own views regarding this so from my point of view i would say that uh, instead of thinking from the bottom uh, we can think from the top of the pyramid where uh, you know economically strong people strong segment will be there and uh, then we can come to the uh, you know median section of the economy then the weaker section can be met so it takes some time but 
but uh, recent uh, innovations and recent uh, uh, you know the way the indian pharma is moving ahead uh, is quite encouraging so, i hope uh, yeah. yeah thank you thank uh, thank you dr sutesh uh, but still uh, means like um, uh, with the personalized medicine as you mentioned that you know we can go from the top to bottom uh, way but then uh, we are not solving the problem of the cost right yeah yeah initially you know the r&d cost everything comes into the play so uh, i don't think uh, the ppl below forty lakh people can afford it but maybe once it you know once it is targeted to the uh, you know top of the pyramid then we can i think you are muted yes sir i think uh, he got his answer sir uh, ravina this side uh, i had basically two questions so your presentation was wonderful no doubt in that uh, my question also goes uh, on parallel grounds with what bade sir told okay so when we talk about india no doubt uh, novel drug delivery system is a booming right yeah but when it comes to developing countries it is really very difficult see uh, so yes. for uk us it is you know quite easy for them the formulators are also there they have labs so there's a kind of you know a glitch between the uh, the one who is producing and till up to the market so i uh, think you understand so the main problem is somewhere <coughs> we know but the layman doesn't understand you know how useful the novel drug delivery system is because they are used to the conventional one so how to brave you know bridge up that entire gap so please can you you know give some insights on that Yeah, so first let me make uh, which uh, whether I got the question in the right way or not. I will you know reframe the question. Uh, so you are saying that the novel drug delivery may not be you know accepted by you know uh, the bottom of the pyramid people because they are. adapted to this is that was the question or anything so yes out? you got it right that was the question yeah so true uh, it's true uh, you know uh, when we were working with one of our student team uh, we went to few of the uh, regional uh, practitioners you know they are not uh, we generally call them as uh, rnp doctors okay it's they are not uh, mbbs doctors they just do the first aid kind of practice you know treatments in the villages so when they when we went to them and we asked them how the drug consumption pattern is or uh, how people assume about the drugs changed uh, you know there was some wonderful insight they said people come with a particular color and size of the pill in their mind for the problem which they had for example if it is uh, if they are suffering with fever they come and they ask give me the blue tablet means uh, you know uh, packed in blue uh, packet so they doesn't think about what is the is it paracetamol or what is the, what it might be but their mindset is something like that they are framed with that you know for this fever this is the tablet which the perception is something like the tablet is positioned in their mind okay blue color white uh, blue packet white tablet you know like a uh, Uh, a big size one and uh, small tablet you know so when 
doctor changes the size or color of the tablet, then people uh, definitely say, no, no, this is not the tablet which uh, you gave me last time. I want the one which you gave me the last time that is wide and it should be bigger than this. This is the psychological hurdle, which is really there in front of. Okay, of course, we offer them the novel drugs, but it, it's it's a hurdle. Okay, you, you know, educating the rural people are educating not not even the rural people. Even it happens in Thai cities also, Thai cities also. People uh, trust the color of the bottle, color of the you know, syrup color packing and they always want the same thing to be purchased. So yes, there are there is a psychological barrier which needs to be overcome. And uh, you know, uh, things need to be, you know, uh, we need to work on how to cross these barriers. Even I do end it with a problem instead of a solution. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, definitely, that was uh, that did did solve my answer. Uh, so yeah, the next question I have is like uh, we talk about a novel drug delivery system, but then the major issue with the novel drugs is the stability problem. Uh, so it is really very difficult in the terms like where we are developing uh, drugs for cancer and drugs for hepatitis, even for diabetes. But still, if the stability becomes a problem, so in, in a long run, if we are thinking of producing such drugs and developing a market, so, you know, can you just focus, like, uh, what is the current scenario uh, in your views, please? Uh, frankly speaking, I'm not very familiar in this area. But, uh, you know, advancement is happening in the clinical trials. Okay? And... Uh, lot of regulations are you know getting simplified particularly during the period of uh, uh, pandemic uh, corona uk has introduced a few drugs without any clinical trials which i don't say not with entire clinical trial free but uh, uh, you know there were some stages and the uh, UK government said that, uh, you know, you can uh, leave those stages and you can uh, come. But when it comes to stability, definitely the stability depends upon the, you know, uh, the one who formulates it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's on the both way. Stability depends upon uh, a stronger formulation at the same time stronger trials. So again, again this is this was a tricky question and I ended up with the problem itself. No sir, it's okay. Uh, yeah, understood. Like you know, you want to say that you know developer should be well versed with what is what preparing. And that is again a point I understand. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for solving my doubts. Uh, I further request Shutuja Shinde ma'am to please present the vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Rabina. Am I audible? Yeah, ma'am, you are audible. Okay, good morning to all. I feel honored to propose a vote of thanks on the behalf of Sihagar Technical Education Society, Sihagar College of Pharmacy, for today's session. My heart fills with lots of gratitude and respect for our guest speaker, Dr. Sati, sir. My heart fills with a lot of gratitude and respect for our guest speaker, Dr. Satish, sir, for not only sparing their invaluable time for us to grace this session, but also for enlightening us with their commendable talk on the subject. Thanks for clearing our concepts and enhancing our understanding in achieving problem solution fit and product market fit. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your guidance. We are thankful to our honorable founder president, Professor M.N. Navle, sir, founder uh, secretary, Dr. Sunanda Navle, ma'am, vice president, Mrs. Rachna Navle Ashtekar, ma'am, vice president, Mr. Rohit Navle, sir, for their motivation. 
I'm running short of words to express my humble thanks to our principal, Dr. Rajesh Patil sir, for arranging, planning, and making this meeting successful. Your support and motivation lead us on the path of success. I would like to thank Dr. Sadhna Raut, ma'am, and our activity coordinator, Mrs. Suvarna Vakare, ma'am, and our teachers for their active participation in making this meeting successful. Once again, thanks to one and all who contributed in this meeting. Thank you so much. I request all to turn on your cameras for photo. Thank you all. Thank you, sir, ma'am. I conclude. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Prime Minister Shuvarna. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you.